book of Genesis chapter 2. We will read from verse 15 to 17. Verse 17. But only from the tree of the knowledge, recognition of good and evil, you shall not eat. Otherwise, on the day that you eat from it, you shall most certainly die because of your disobedience. Amen. 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 That is the answer for everything whatever each and every one of us are going through. Because one of us was created by God. Was created to look after the garden of Eden. Only to look after the garden of Eden. To cultivate. But now, as we are here, you still remember, we are in the year of sacrifice. This is the year of sacrifice. For those who don't know what is the theme of this year, this is the year of sacrifice. Now as we talk about the year of sacrifice, we go back and see how this sacrifice came upon man. Because man was given opportunity to look after the garden of Eden. When we check on that story, it's like us. God gave us something for us to look after it. But now, some of us, we are not doing the, the right thing. We are not looking after the garden which God is planted in us. Because that story, it reminds us, it also gives us an idea that God, whenever he made us, he loved us. Anything, whatever is going wrong in our lives, is not because of God. Is because of us. Because one of us was made to look after the garden of Eden. Only to cultivate. But now, because of them not following the instruction of God, they were warned that if they eat that tree, they will die. How many of us are being instructed that you must look after what you have, what God has given to you. Because God, when He created us, He used this image. But whatever is planting in us is not the same. But some of us, we are not looking after that garden which God has placed in us. Because as you live on this earth, make sure that you look after that guy. Because if you don't look after that guy, if the instruction is being told that you must not supposed to do this, that is what you are supposed to do. Because if God created another man, it means that if Adam and Eve never did that, he was going to give them another assignment, which was for them to do, not what Adam was doing. But now for us, we tend to do what we were, we were not told because of friends, because of relatives. Because I can be born to a family, but what God has placed in me is not the same as my siblings. We have to do different things. Praising God, not going to work, because we can do the same work as and every one of us who can be lawyers, who can be doctors in a family. But for God, we can't be the same. We won't be the same. Because God has planted something in us. 
Now, because of us not following instruction, God said, you will die. What about us? What is God saying upon what we can, what we have in our body, whatever you have? Because each and every one of us has got something which God has placed in you. Because you are the image of God. You are not the image of your parents. You are the image of God. As many as we are, we have different gifts. And there is something which we need to do which is not the same. Because as generations come, it's not going to be the same works. We will differ. Because this book, it reminds each and every one of us that that is the time when you don't have to make mistakes. You need to follow the instruction which God is giving to you. Because some of you, you hear voices. God will be speaking to you. God will be speaking to you because you are not the same as others. But some of you are still afraid. Because I just heard she was uh, giving a prayer point saying that we must pray for our children. But I know when we are praying for our children, but there is something which we did. We are sacrificing for our children. Each and every one of us, we are sacrificing for our children. Because of what happened in the Garden of Eden. Because this life which we are living, we are living the life of sacrifice. We are sacrificing everything. Some of you sacrifice to go to school. Some of you will change careers because of the sacrifice you are making. Because you, you want to have a brighter future. But now, what about us? Doing that to God. Sacrificing something for God. Because God wants us to sacrifice something. Because he has given us something which is supposed to reap rewards, have fruits. Because they say we are the light of God. We are the light of God. Why? It's not the selected one. Every one of us, we are the light of God. According to who we are, how God has created us. God has created us on this earth. We are not a mistake. Because some of us will say we are a mistake. No, no one is a mistake. It was the plan of God. And when you check, even if you say you are a mistake, but each and every one around you, they are sacrificing for you. They will make sure that there is something good comes up. They won't leave you like that. They will try. Even your uncle or your grandmother or whatever will sacrifice for you. Why can't we sacrifice also for God? Sacrifice our lives for God. Let us open the book of uh, Genesis chapter 3. Read from verse 20 to 24. Verse 20. The man named his wife Eve. Life spring, life giver. Because she was the mother of all the living. Verse 21. The Lord God made tunics of animals, of animal skins for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, knowing how to distinguish between good and evil. And now he might stretch out his hand and take for the, from the tree of life as well and eat its fruit and live in this fallen sinful condition forever. Amen. What did they say? They say, man, 
know good and what and give. It means that it's us because we are the offsprings of Adam and Eve. Because they knew good and evil. But now for us, we are living in a time where each and every one of us, we know good and we know uh, things which are not good, which are evil. But now we are still speaking, going to acquire, to receive from the evil ones. But we know the truth. As we are here in the uh, kingdom of God, God wants us to know the truth. But as we are, we know the truth because now we know evil and good. But as we live on this earth, are we doing good or doing bad? Because when we decide to sacrifice for our children, what are we doing? We are doing good because we want something good to be happening to our children. Because we know that if we don't sacrifice for them, nothing good will come up. Because no one likes things which are not good based on the future of each and every one. But for us, sometimes we forget that there are some things which we are not doing, which are, which are not good. Because some of us now, we are looking for things of this world. We are running after things of this world. Not knowing that that is the evil things which we are doing. As the book says, we know good and evil. Why can't we speak on the good things? Why can't we decide to do good? Because all of us, as we are the offsprings of Adam and Eve, it means that we know good and evil. No one will teach you about evil things, but we see them, but we still go to those things. Because as God has created us, some of us, we are not supposed to be somewhere, we are not supposed to do something. But you will, you will be looking forward to do something because that is your sacrifice. That is the way God wants you to sacrifice your life. Because small things which they are telling you not to do, you say that is not a sacrifice. The only one you present it will be they are forcing me to do something which I don't want. That is a mere sacrifice on, on its own. Because this year is the year of sacrifice. How are you going to go about this thing? Are you going to follow the instruction? If they say don't go there, are you not going to do that? Or you are going to force yourself to go there? Because the book says we know good and evil. No one will say that this is evil. They will just instruct you saying that no, don't do that. But you are all with me that you will be helping yourself not doing those things. Because you know those things are not good for you. They can be good for someone, but for you they are evil. Based on who you are, based on that garden inside of you. Because some of us, we like to imitate, we like to follow people, we like to be encouraged by other people. Why? God is telling us that stay there, stand there, don't move. Some of us we want to move when God never said that. Because people are receiving good things, people are changing their lives, now you want to be like them. <laughs> because if God brought suffering, who is supposed to suffer? It means that there are periods where every one of us will suffer. Every one of us will have period where we will suffer. We need to go through that. Even now, if I can say, no one will be liked by everyone. Someone must hate you. But now you, you will be fighting, saying that I want them to love me, to like me, all of them. Why? How can you live like that? Because if everyone likes you, they won't even tell you that you are doing wrong. That is when 
you want to differentiate between good and evil. Because we think as if whatever you are doing is right. Because no one will mind you saying that whatever you are doing is wrong. Because when God is reminding us about these verses, it wants us to accept, to be prepared, prepared for the sacrifice. Prepare yourself for the journey. That journey is for you, not for your friends or your family or your siblings. It's for you only. Because the reward when they come, they will be coming for you. Because I heard this, uh, Michelle was even giving us this uh, prayer point saying that the mask which the enemy has placed on each and every one of us, let the power of the Holy Ghost destroy it. That mask was designed for you, not for your siblings, for you only. Now, if that mask must be taken out, who need to sacrifice his life? It's you, it's not your friend or it's not, it's not your brother. Whatever situation you are in, you need to sacrifice to be out of that situation. Because this thing of saying, I go to church, it means that I'm the one who are saving all of them. No, you can do something small to make them to be out of some problem, but there are some problems which all of them by themselves, they need to pray or to do something for themselves so that they can go out from them. Because if the mask comes, it will be for you only. It won't be for everyone. Now each and every one of us must also understand that the sacrifice which we need to make, we need to accept it first. We need to accept who we are. Because if you don't accept who you are, how can you sacrifice? Because even Jesus Christ, when he came to this earth, he accepted before he came. He accepted while he was still young. Everything about him, it was accepted. Everything. What about us? Why can't we accept? Because now we know the truth. Some of you, you know who you are. But you are still running away. And if you can check, sacrifice comes in period because there is something which needs to develop in you. How are you going to develop if you don't sacrifice? Because the sacrifice of last year, it won't be the same as the sacrifice of this year. Some of us, we were supposed to sacrifice last year. That's why I just said, we must pray, say, God forgive us. Because some of us, because I still remember, I came to know God while I'm old. I'm just saying that if it was better for me to know God while I was still young, because those sacrifices which I was supposed to make while I was still young, I would have made them. Now they are tithing on me. I need to make a lot of sacrifice. Because God, when he, he placed Adam and Eve, it was nice, it was good, because they were going to live a life when they were relaxing. But look what they did. They ate the tree. And now God said, it means that from that day, they started to sacrifice. They started to sacrifice everything. Everything was based on sacrifice. But now if you are told that you need to sacrifice, why do you complain? Because sacrifice started by Adam and Eve. Because they didn't listen. Now what about us, if we are listening, are we going to sacrifice more? No, God will be making all those sacrifices so that it can be easy for us. But if you are not doing right, it means that you will be sacrificing more. Because according to who we are, according to how we created you, God knows your life lifespan that how long you are going to live and which sacrifice you need to make. It's not Brother Ken, who knows who, which sacrifice you need to make? The only thing God will instruct you to instruct you to do some other sacrifice. We don't even know how much, how big the sacrifice 
are for each and every one of us. Because some of you, they will say, because like Abraham, the sacrifice for you to separate from his parents. Imagine, some of you, they say, you must separate from your parents. You must move out from a house. Don't see them for 20 years or whatever. Are you going to allow it? Let us open the book of Job. Job chapter 1. We'll read from verse 3, from verse 1 to 3. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1, verse 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that day, that man was blameless and upright, and one who feared, feared God with reverence, and abstained from and abstained from and turned away from evil, because he honored God. Verse 2. Seven sons and three daughters were born to him. Verse 3. He also possessed 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke pairs, uh, pairs of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very great number of servants. So that this man was the greatest and the wealthiest, most respected of all the men of the East, Northern Arabia. Amen. We just heard about the story of Job. This is the introduction of this man of God. It means that some of us, if they're talking about us, that story, we just imagine if it was my parents. I was supposed to be in that place where I was born in that place. Because of what he had, everything, whatever he had. Because some of us, we stick to look upon things of this world which we have acquired which we have received based on the sacrifice we made on this earth because sacrifice which we made to read sacrifice which we have made to follow instructions when our lectures teachers give us we always follow them because now we will be receiving what job had we will be having cars money everything if someone wants something we just give them because you don't have a problem, because you have all. But now, what about the sacrifice which you have to make in the kingdom of God? Because we tend to say, we, we tend to sacrifice on this earth based on what we want. Not sacrificing for the kingdom, for the afterlife. Because we tend to do that so that they can see what we have. We can even sacrifice for all our children. Maybe you've got four children. Someone is a doctor, the other one is a, is a lawyer, the other one is a businessman. Now you're just floating all over the way and say, oh, we have all. We have everything. There is nothing which we want. But we tend to forget that in that book, they will say that we know who the name is. Every one of us, we know who the name is. But as we receive all those things, are we reminding, reminded to sacrifice for God into the altars which God has placed upon our lives? Because we can have everything. That is when people normally say, God, I'm enough. Because I still remember she said, we must pray and say we are enough. We are enough of what? Of the, all the spears, everything to fight so that we can work for the kingdom, do the works of God. But some of us, we say we are enough because we have received what we want in this world. We have everything. We are relaxed because we are rich. We have money. What about God? 
Because this story of Job, they need to remind all of us that whatever you have, God can, can take all of them. <coughs> you can be rich, but God, if he says he wants his sacrifice, he can take all of it. He can take everything. You can be rich and say you don't want any prayer. Or you can be praying, but what about the sacrifice upon your head? Because how many people are there? They were supposed to be apostles, but they are rich. They are standing, sitting home, doing nothing. Because that sacrifice which we are making is for the nation. If the sacrifice they say must sacrifice your life, what about those people out there who need you? Who need you? But you, you are concentrating on these things of this world, which God has said, you know good and evil. That's why I said, ask for God to forgive us. Because God can give you something you are supposed to do. Because as God has given us characters, those characters need to be used in the kingdom of God to fight the enemy. If God is blessing you, it means that God is blessing you to make sure that his kingdom is known. Because if you receive money, what about if that money you are using for the gospel of God to be known by each and every one? Because you know in this time as we sit here, you know there is a place where they don't even know about the Bible. They can't even read some of the people out there. But as we live in this world, we think as if everything is fine. But there is a place where you will find people that don't even know how to read. They are still living that old life. But for us, some of us we have money where we can read them. But if the kingdom of God wants to use you to read them, you are rich but you can't read those people because your money doesn't work for God, it works for you. But God is reminding us that as Job has everything, God can do what has happened to Job. And there is two, two stories on this story of Job. It is based on what God will do if you forgot, forget about him. And also, it teaches us if God will test you. Let us uh, read, uh, go to the, the same book and proceed to uh, verse 9 to 11. Verse 9. Then Satan answered the Lord, Does Job fear God for nothing? Verse 10. Have you not put a hedge of protection around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and conferred prosperity and happiness upon him, and his possessions have increased in the land. Verse 11. But put forth your hand now, and touch or destroy all that he has, and he will surely cast you to your face. That is another thing which we must understand also. Because as we live on this earth, you can be doing everything for God, saying that whatever you are doing, is the right thing in your eyes, in our eyes also. But if God wants to separate you for, from, from something which he knew to mold you, he can do anything to you. That is the story which we need to understand. God can take everything what you have. Even if you are in our midst, not doing what God said you must do. Because some of us, we are more anointed, but we are not using that anointing. While we are in church, 
God can even do the same thing what he did to Job. Because Job was the man of God. He, was, he didn't do anything wrong. But the only thing is that that book is teaching us that even if you are a man of God doing everything for God, if God wants you to sacrifice something for him, because that is what it, it is needed of you, because no one will do that sacrifice. If you are, you are siblings in a house, they say you must be the one sacrificing this. You need to do that. Don't say that, no, you need to do, uh, replace me doing the sacrifice. No, that is from God. If God says, do the sacrifice, you must do the sacrifice. Because if God was waiting for you to do a sacrifice for him, what about if he comes back and do the sacrifice for himself? For you to follow him. Because some of us, that is what is happening to our lives. We forget about God. We forget about his sacrifice. Because this year is the year of sacrifice. Because still remember, last year we, we were hearing about the sword. Now what about if this year of sacrifice is upon you for you to sacrifice some for God? Now you don't do that sacrifice. Now God will be saying that no, I will do the sacrifice to remind them. Oh, he can do something. He will also do what he did to Job. Because Job, when we hear the story, he lost everything. He lost everything. Because God can even make sure that you lose everything. For you to be reminded that there is a sacrifice which, which you need to do. How many of us are prepared to do that? Because we are not the same. We are not the same. In the eyes of God, we are not the same. Whatever Brother Kenny has sacrificed is not what I need to sacrifice. Maybe I will sacrifice more than him. Who knows? Because some of us, we tend to be looking upon our leaders, saying that whatever our leaders has done, it means that it means I have to sacrifice the same as he sacrificed. What about if you need to do more than him? And God comes to you as Job. He did to Job. He loses everything. You lose your children, you lose everything. Now you will be saying God is not alive. But you were told that there is an instruction which you need to do. You need to sacrifice this. Because a small sacrifice, that is where people are making things to be difficult for themselves. Because if God says, don't go there, you turn and go. And God says, no, don't enter here. You just say, no, I will enter. What about everything, all the instruction is given to you? When he comes back, he will just say, no, because he's moving, he's going where he's going. I will stop everything which is making it to move. I will make sure that it will stop doing anything. Because in life, some of us will think as if we are rich. If we are educated, we don't want God. God is not God of education. God is God of spirit. God is God of spirit. He uses his spirit. He doesn't use money. Because some of us, when it was announced that this is the year of sacrifice. Some of us, we were thinking, oh, I don't have money. It means that from now on, I won't be going to church because they will be asking for money. What about if that sacrifice is for you to be here from now until December? If that is your sacrifice, are you going to do it? Because some of us, we compare sacrifice with money. We say the sacrifice is based on money. What about if God is saying you must sacrifice yourself. Come and change. Because some of us, our hearts are not open. Maybe if you come to the presence of God, that is when God will be delivering you while you are seated there. Because this thing of mocking God, because people are mocking God because 
as we see in our ministries, in all the TVs where we can see, people they say deliverance is based on when someone is putting a hand on you and you roll. That is where people are being delivered. That is where people are running to those churches. But God can even deliver you while you are seated there. Because it's not delivering your head, it's delivering your heart. Because that is the only problem we have, the issue of our hearts. The hearts. Because God, whatever He has planted, it will be secret. It will be secret. No one sees your heart. No one can see your heart. It's only God. What about if that plantation is inside your heart? Now you don't want to open it so that God can come and take what is wrong, which this world has put in you. Because I, 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 I can even say that if a young child is born, if we can check the heart, that heart is not filled with evil things. But as we grow, we absorb evil things. They enter our hearts, and our hearts are closed. That's why some of us we don't accept because of the issue of the heart. We don't accept who you are. Because if you believe by your heart, that is when things will be fine. Because now, if God says you must give a seed, sacrifice a seed, which is money, God can't say that you, you must offer money if he doesn't know that you don't <coughs> He knows that you have money. And that will be a test to you. Because some of us will think as if God says he needs sacrifice, it's only money. I need to work, I need to do everything so that whenever I go to church, let me first uh, go and work and after working I will come to church. Now when they say they want money, you will say, oh, they want our money, you go back again. But that time we will prepare and say that oh, I can't go to church because I'm not working. If they say they want this, I won't be able to place something on the altar. But God doesn't want your money. God wants your heart. God wants your sacrifice. You as a sacrifice of God. Because he showed us when he brought Jesus Christ. Because that is what he wants us to be taught. He came with the truth. The truth was, sacrifice yourself. Sacrifice yourself. Don't look what you have. Because whatever you have, God can take them. Even my children, God can take them. They can take your parents, those who you rely on. Now if we take your parents, who are you going to write to? Are you going to cry to someone or who? You will be going back to God and cry to Him. Why can't you cry now while things are still alright? Because if Adam and Eve, they went to God and cried to God, it was going to be well. But now God put death because of they didn't follow instructions. Some of us, we are here, we know who we are. We know what we need to sacrifice. We know what we need to change in our lives. Because they say, a new year, everyone says, when the year comes, I want to change. I know some of them out there, they have they've not been coming to church, maybe for a longer period, maybe five years or three years. Their plan for this year, they say, no, I need to go to church, to go back to church, because I used to go to church while I was still here, now I need to go to church. But they are planning something good. What about you 